Lima. Deep right field. Down the line it goes. Got Castellanos it. is out of room. It's out of Runner goes. 3 2 pitch hit down the line. Is it there? It is a fair ball. Into the corner. Off and running. Chu. Yu Chang around third. He's going to score easily. And in the second. Hit hard. Hit deep. Up and out. Goes a man Rosario. And there's a fly ball. Left field. It's deep. It's up. It's gone to the park. Hit pretty well. Deep left center field. It is gone to Souvenir City. And good evening, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Guardians of the CLE podcast. I'm your host, Melanie Kirby. And I want to first start off with some exciting news. We all know the Guardians of Ed 14 guys make their debuts this season. And now we have a debut of our own. And it's my pleasure to introduce my new co-host for the Guardians of the CLE podcast, James Elifritz. James, how are you feeling? Well, I'm, I'm actually really excited. Really excited. Uh, Mel, it's been great to meet you. I uh, get to talk to some of the crew, uh, Believe Land Media. Um, really thankful for this opportunity. And I can't wait to express all my love and passion for the city of Cleveland, but also for Guardians baseball. Yeah, you're going to knock it out of the park, but you got any of those first day jitters stepping up to the plate? Yeah, just trying to get prepared. <laughs> I mean, you know, getting everything set up and ready to go. But uh, yeah, I'm in the batter's box now, so let's go. All right. And for everybody listening, you can give him a follow at the Fritz 330. So make sure you go out and show James some love. Uh, before we get going into the episode tonight, just a quick little game update. The Guardians are currently down two to nothing to the Orioles. It's in the fourth inning. Gunner Gunner Henderson just smoked a ball to right center for his first major league home run. That's now the 22nd Tristan has allowed. Um, his first at bat was actually the incredible catch by Stephen Kwan, which I don't know how Ryan Mountcastle gets doubled off on a foul ball, but it happened. I'll take it. Um, and Jordan Lyles, uh, he's just another mediocre starter who happens to be shutting down the Guardians offense. Um, it's still early, though. Jose just got a leadoff double in the fourth. So any thoughts on the game so far, James? I'm just excited to have the playoff atmosphere at home right now. Yeah. You know, Baltimore's had a, a season just like ours to where it's pretty much unexpected. Um, and then for them to trade uh, Trey Mancini, but yet they're bringing up you know, Henderson, yeah, it's, it, it feels a lot They're the same. Deep. Baltimore, yeah, Baltimore baseball feels a lot the same as what Cleveland is. So, yeah, um, it's, I kind of find myself unwillingly like liking them. And I don't know if you've seen on Twitter, they have these amazing videos for the guys who get called up to the majors. They show you the moment they found out, they put like a hype yeah. video together. And I am just screaming for the Cleveland Guardians to do something to hype up all these exciting kids that we have there's a lot of people who Stephen Kwan and Oscar Gonzalez could walk anywhere in the city of Cleveland and probably go on notice to you know a lot of just casual fans like I would really love to see them marketing these kids a little bit better well Stephen could because based on his height <laughs> but then Oscar I don't know I'm not sure he's a he's big pretty dude tall. you know we basically have a uh, point guard and some a shooting guard and a small forward out in our outfield yeah. between and Kwan uh, Benson and uh, Gonzalez. So and they all um, got hops. They're yeah. all flying up into the walls. I love watching this team play defense in the outfield. And we're gonna get in a, into our offense or our outfield defense. You know, a lot of it related to offense. Why there could be some changes coming up here soon. But another kind of note: um, Zach Meisel and Mandy Bell reported that Cody Morris is in Cleveland. Um, he, on the taxi squad, as we know, tomorrow is September 1st, which means September call-ups. Are we going to have another major league debut we can talk about on the episode next week? That would be Cody Morris. He would be making his debut, and he seems like a lock to be one of the two called up. And, you know, the second one could be a couple guys. Um, could be Gabriel Arias. He's been playing some first base in left field down at Columbus. We, I mean, he's not really going to play left field here, but... Um, we know first base has kind of been an issue, so it's going to be fun to welcome, you know, a couple of new guys to the club. You know, do they bring Nolan Jones back? Maybe send Tyler Freeman down to get some run and every day at bats, just like everything with this team, it's going to be kind of fascinating to see what they do with these roster decisions moving forward. 
Yeah, you feel with all this young talent that somehow, some way, somebody's going to get redirected to first base. Yeah. Um, yep, we, we, we're definitely going to need that. Um, and I think the young guys are going to see that opportunity to eventually, and it might not, I'm just probably not going to be this year, but um, to be able to play every day, um, yeah. they're going to sign up for that, um, regardless if it's a position that might not be number one on our list. Agreed. Um, so just kind of recapping the week that was, after the Guardians swept the San Diego Padres down at Petco, they headed up north to face the Seattle Mariners. And, you know, what I thought is a series of two teams that are very evenly matched, both kind of young, yeah. both play good defense, outstanding pitching, both starting and in the bullpen. And, you know, I thought that they were so evenly matched that there's no way they don't split. And, you know, regardless of us losing the series three games to one, we, we kept it close in every single one of those games. Um, Friday was kind of that game that got away. Obviously, Thursday, you know, one pitch, one one bad mistake by Tristan allowed the three-run homer to Hanniger. That was all she wrote, Marco Gonzalez. The Guardians just continue to struggle against these soft tossers, you know, especially lefties. They're really struggling with, but... Um, Friday was that game that really felt like it got away. You know, James, I mean, you had Bieber went seven, struck out nine. He was outstanding. You know, Tyler Freeman had the game to forget. You know, Bieber gave up two runs, only one of them earned. You know, Freeman had the two errors in that game. He's a kid. I mean, he he deactivated his Twitter because people were just coming at him with death threats and just crazy stuff. Like, these guys are kids, and they're playing the game of baseball better than any one of us could ever dream of it. Everybody's going to have a bad, bad game. Freeman is going to be a star in this league and I'm not down on him one bit. Yeah. Uh, I mean, to, to talk about the effort that was put in over the weekend uh, for the entire series, it was all there. It's once again, talking about playoff baseball and that October feel on the that road crowd was rocking. At, yeah. It was, uh, you know, each row um, was in town for the weekend with, with his retirement. Um, so it was a it was an energy that these guys need to experience because they have not experienced that at the minor league level based on the size of the capacity of the stadiums. Yeah. Um, so that's definitely a good, you know, in- introduction to what they're going to be facing uh, come October. Yeah. And Friday was kind of the game that set the tone for the weekend. You know, I felt like it was the game that got away and it was kind of just how the whole weekend went in a nutshell. Um, the team went one for 15 with runners in scoring position. It's just simply not going to get the job done. Um, Rosario hit into that double play in the 10th inning. He he has 14 now and that leads the team. It's not really ideal for the number two hole, but I'll get into that a little later. But once they didn't score in the 10th, you just kind of felt like they weren't going to pull this one out. And and you can't, you know, you can't overlook Stephen Kwan. That That and St. Catch in the fifth. Uh, diving into the seats uh, for me, it had Jeter flashbacks. You yeah. know when I first saw it, and it was one of those where I'm watching the game. You know how it is when you watch baseball, right? You can kind of sit back and enjoy it, and and next thing you know, here's you know here's a foul ball, and all of a sudden when he made that play and he dove in there, it was one of those makes you jump up like, yeah. oh my gosh, yeah, like, and he really just dove into those seats. And, and he landed. So awesome. that, he landed on that one seat nobody was sitting in. Yeah, I where felt were they? So bad, right? They like got up to get a beer or something, yeah, and our yeah. left fielder just goes flying into that particular seat. I mean, you go to a game and you hope to catch a foul ball, and right there you could have caught a left fielder, and you're not in your seats. What right. the heck's going on? You could have could have caught our little cute left fielder just coming flying, giving a hundred and ten percent every single pitch that's yeah. thrown in a game, and. I mean, what does he do next at bat? Casual single to left field, opposite field. He just keeps on. He's impressive. I mean, he's been, except for May when he was making his adjustments, he's hit over 300 every single month. And it's just incredible. Um, But to the 11th, so Class A comes on. I think he throws one or two pitches. Mitch Hanniger, once again, singles to right field. And this is is interesting because I saw this go kind of both ways on Twitter. Um, I thought Gonzalez made a, a great throw. I Jimenez ducked out of the way because I think he knew it had enough to get to Miller. Mm-hmm. And with Miller being closer to the plate, 
he could have thrown a bullet. Dude would have been out by a mile. But for some reason, and if you look at the right field view that Apple TV had from like Gonzalez's perspective, I mean, it was right to Miller. And for some weird reason, Owen Miller like ducks out of the way of the ball. And it, it, you know, obviously it gets away and that's all she wrote. But I think that's just what made it so frustrating is we don't see this team beat themselves very often, if at all. And this was right. just the game where they were just out of sorts all night. And, you know, once again, Owen Miller just, and I don't even hate the guy for it. Like he's just not a first baseman. He's playing out of position. And I don't know what we can really expect from him at this point. You know, he's future utility guy. Um, you know, as long as he remains with the ball club, as we keep bringing up younger and younger guys, which is almost impossible to do. I mean, how many, yeah. How many MLB uh, debuts we can we have? We with them. <laughs> We're basically, our minor league system is up on our big league squad this year. It's just, it's mind-blowing, and I love it. And it, is it about the uh, the lockout between MLB and the Players Association um, as far as being able to get younger players up sooner, uh, which is good for the player, it's good for the league, and it's great for the team. Yeah. Um, we want to see these guys up, and – when it take when it, in the past when it's taken you know quite a long time for guys to get up there or maybe not even make it at all, it's yeah it's been a, it's been a struggle to to want to see them all get up there and succeed because way too long you run out of space right so and that's a good point with our forty man roster is currently constructed as we all know there's some big decisions that once again have to be made and you know they made a bunch last. Um, Last offseason, fill in the 40 man with guys who hadn't even played in the majors yet, you know, thinking there would be a, a rule five draft. As we know, with the lockout, there didn't end up being one, but they're right back in it. You know, this offseason, who do they keep? And I think that's a big reason why they didn't make any moves in the offseason or at the deadline, because the philosophy has, you know, been steady. We, we want to see what these kids have. They really have no choice. They have to make decisions and you don't want to not get a guy an opportunity and then he goes on to be a star somewhere else and you didn't even get him a look on your you know major what? league club. That's probably going to happen because if you look back at the 90s when Pedro Martinez was potentially a possible trade uh, target for the for the Indians, I had to hold on to some of those young guys. It didn't make that trade and that's something that could have been the absolute difference maker and look what he went on to do at Boston. Yeah. And uh, I think we're going to face that within the next couple seasons. We're going to get guys up, see what they can do, which we're already seeing currently. But there's going to be more. And eventually it's just going to be out of space. And we might be able to be in that position to fi finally make that, that trade for maybe that one key piece that's going to bring that championship to Cleveland. Yeah. I, I mean, I'd love to see him go out and get a starting pitcher this offseason Be you know, the back end of our rotation, we got a lot of, I've said it on the pod before, we got a lot of kind of low ceiling, high floor guys. And one of those guys is Zach Plesak. And he took the bump on Saturday trying to get his first one since pre-pandemic. Oh, wait, it hasn't been that long. But June 5th, <laughs> June 5th was his last win. I, like, I knew he'd been struggling and I know he gets no run support. I had no idea it had been two and a half months since this dude got a W. And... I think what's so fascinating about this police act start is he didn't allow any base runners. His three hits allowed were th the three solo home runs. And I think this is a good example. This is something Tristan can look at and be like, okay, the home run doesn't have to kill me. It does not have to be my downfall. If I can keep the guys off base with the walks and the singles and things like that, that home run's not going to kill you like that solo shot by Gunnar Henderson, yeah. it's still a 2-0 game. We're still in this game in the fifth inning. It wasn't a three-run shot where you're taken out of the game. But about that, Tom Withers said that it was the first time in team history where they allowed three hits and three runs, all solo homers. It's only happened six times since 1901 in baseball, and the last time was the Reds in 2017. So I, I don't know why I found that. I'm like, you know what? They really – I'm looking up the runners and scoring position stats, and I'm like, wow, the Mariners didn't have any runners in scoring position all night. That's pretty incredible. Yeah. And then you think about, you know, Tristan's pitch on Thursday, that three-run homer. One pitch. Right, right at the beginning of the game, 
And that's just, it's the other two guys that are on base that really, you know, makes it magnified with, with the issues as far as the walks or, you know, yeah. the singles and then giving up back to back hits, just keeping guys off base is a, is a big deal. And this was the fun game of the weekend. This was a come from behind win and Munoz was, was pitching the eighth, which I think makes this comeback even more impressive. You know, we know their bullpen is Los Bombaros or something like that because they've been, yeah. him especially has been, he's their Emmanuel class A. Like he's almost unhittable. And of course, who starts it off? Stephen Kwan gets a walk, does his job as the leadoff man, gets on base. That's all the kid knows how to do. And then Ahmed hit one of his 5,683,000 singles um, <laughs> to move Quan up. And I say that, I, I know I, the Rosario people might come for me here. I do not hate Ahmed Rosario, but I'm just simply pointing out 74% of his total hits this year have been singles. That's three quarters of his hits are singles. Which is fine, but they're mostly in low leverage situations, which we'll get to the high leverage yeah. stats. Which Miles Straw would say, sign me up for that. Oh, yeah. If if Miles Straw could stop trying to drive the ball, he might, he might you know, be having some of these singles like he did yeah. last year. But, again, we'll get into him, too. But Jose, RBI double to left, smoked that ball down the left field line. It was his 106th RBI. That is a new career high for Mr. Ramirez, which – is wild because we're all like, Jose, wake up. We're in a playoff race. Like, come on, be Jose Ramirez. And he's out here just setting career highs quietly with nobody even paying attention because we think he's been slumping for two months. Yeah. It's just insane. The guy hasn't played any difference since he gets, he signed his extension. He just shows up at the park every day, gives it his all, and has a lot of fun doing it, which that's what baseball is all about. Yeah, he he was messing with all the Orioles infield last night. That was I saw hilarious. That. Yep. I'm like, that's so disgusting, and I and love it. Did you it. see the response back? There was they were like, <laughs> they're like, we don't they know, what, know to what, do. what to do. This yeah, is weird. <laughs> Why is he talking to us? It's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I absolutely love that because Twins fans have been calling us disgusting lately, and I think us as fans, I'm just starting to embrace that disgusting. Like that is so disgusting, and I love it. They can call us at anything they want. As long as we're called AL Central Champs at the end of the season, it's all that matters. Right. Like, I barely see them in my rearview mirror. I mean, they're getting closer. I don't, I, I want to be careful talking shit because they're playing the Red Sox who suck. And, you know, they're getting close, but I'm still not worried. I'm confident. Um, yeah. But yeah, the Mariners were 51 and 0 with a lead in the eighth. Now they're 51 and 1, thanks to the top of the Guardians lineup you know, started off with Stephen Kwan. Doesn't get more exciting than that. Uh, Sunday. So Savali dominant until the fifth, which I don't know about you, James, but I was so encouraged to see Savali on Sunday against the team. He could very well face in the playoffs. If we get there, um, obviously it kind of fell apart in the fifth, not all his fault, uh, but he went six in the third, four runs, four hits, five strikeouts and two walks. Um, obviously Robbie, Robbie Ray, you know, former Cy Young winner mowing us down, but then the fifth inning comes. And, you know, we mentioned earlier Owen Miller at first base and Sunday was not any better. So Miller starts the double play first, throws it over to Jose covering second, and then Miller doesn't get back to the bag. So Savali's over there covering. Should Savali have caught that ball? Absolutely. We all know things are kind of a crapshoot when pitchers go to cover the bag. Do I think Owen Miller Probably could have got back to first by the, in time. Probably. But again, it's just one of the many mental mistakes. And then we get the net. We get the foul ball into the dang net. Yep. And of course, it's with Owen Miller. What do you think about that? What are your thoughts on that, James? I mean, the effort was there. Um, that net, I mean, I get it. Uh, I get protecting the crowd, but I'm still not a big fan of it. Uh, but it's not going anyway anytime soon. Um, but yeah, it's... Except the effort was there. I thought he was going to get it. I did too, yeah. Just, ah, so close. I was ready to cheer him on for a change. I was going to give him his roses if he came down with that. He had it, and then the net, the damn net, dislodged it. I mean, and then the most predictable thing in baseball, right afterwards, Dillamore smokes a three-run homer. That's all she freaking wrote there. They did have one chance, though. They did have a chance actually right after that in the top of the sixth. 
Jimenez leadoff double, hedges singles, runners at the corner, no outs. We're definitely going to tie this game. I feel that we're tying this game. We didn't tie the game. Miles Straw, once again, weak pop out. Quan actually popped up. Rosario strikeout. He was 0 for 4 on the day with four strikeouts. Got the golden sombrero. Rocked it well. Not what you want to see. But again, it just goes to show. In the in the weekend series, they scored seven runs in four games and were four for 26 with runners in scoring position. It's just not going to get the job done. But again, Seattle is not no scrub. They have outstanding pitching. Um, I know we're a contact team, and when we're not finding the holes, this could happen because I know it gets lost in the shuffle, but we're 18th in the league in OBP. These guys don't like to walk. They want to hit their way on base. We see it all the time with Jose Ramirez. He's always got the green light 3-0, as he absolutely should, but he pops the ball up. You know, Rosario, Jimenez, fastballs up in the zone. Get some um, Ogon, you know, breaking balls, low and away. This team just doesn't like to take their walks, so when they're not finding the holes, the struggles are kind of magnified, right? Yeah, I think they, what they do is it's it's not broke, don't fix it. So, yep. you know, if the, they if got if their making, approach. Yeah, if you're making great contact and, and you're finding holes and you're finding bloopers into the outfield, stay aggressive. And I'm Rock sure that's it. what the hitting, hitting coach tells them. So another thing that came out of the broadcast, on I believe it was Sunday, is Andre not reported that Jose Ramirez has kind of been lobbying the front office to pay the man, pay him Ed Rosario, extend him. Um, obviously we know they're really good friends. They're always together in the dugout. And Ahmed is an excellent piece as far as like the clubhouse goes. Like the guys seem to love him. He seems like an awesome dude. Um, but here, so here's my thoughts on it. I absolutely do not hate Rosario. If he's in the right role, I am a hundred percent all for keeping him on this team in some capacity. If he's willing to sign a team friendly deal and maybe play a few different positions, a hundred percent sign me up all day long. But the problem is, you know, at shortstop, it's our deepest position. And I know that the guys coming up are not proven. We know who Ahmed Rosario is. He's, you know, a very serviceable major league, major league bat. He's improved his defense quite a bit. And I give him a ton of credit for that. But, you know, a lot of people, all they do is watch the broadcast and they see, oh, he's fourth in the league in hits, right? Which he is. He's 100% fourth in the league in hits. So I looked up his high leverage stats, which I believe are like seventh inning or later within two runs, something like that. He's got 95 plate appearances, 228 average, 253 OBP, 326 slugging with 20 strikeouts, two walks four grounded into double plays, and he's got a 60 OP- OPS plus. So a lot of his a lot of his hits come in low leverage situations, which again, I think if he's hitting sixth, seventh in the order, perfect spot for him. But when you have a guy like Jimenez hitting sixth and seventh, and he gets that lead off double, who the hell is going to drive him in? Yeah. Right? The only thing I would – I would disagree on is the multiple positions because watching him in the outfield That's earlier in the year. Whoa. Uh, yeah. Get him yep. back. It's short now. And um, that's the best argument you could have that. Yeah. yeah. He'd be a great utility guy, but he doesn't play. We don't even know if he can play second, right? Like he's never even played second. We have no idea if this dude can play any other positions, but people are signing him up for the utility job. And that left field spot that he uh, was in earlier in the season. When Quan was over and right. Thank God that didn't work. Cause look at Quan. It, yeah. It's not going to, he's not going back there anytime soon. He literally Maybe. just singled as we're talking. He just singled one. So that's okay. So what, I just he's saw like it too, 75% but I'm of his hits now are singles. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a little, I'm a few seconds behind you. Yep. I just saw it too. That's incredible. I love live baseball during a podcast. Absolutely. Um, all right. So the next issue, why could this have happened? Well, Miles Straw has to become the fourth outfielder. And Tito actually kind of mentioned this. We're seeing Will Will Benson get his second start in a row in center field. And Tito mentioned last night that he said they value what he does what Miles does in center field. He's talked to Miles and he understands, you know, the situation. So that's telling me Miles is aware that he's hitting 199 overall, which has been greatly helped out by hitting 100 average in the month of August and James take a take a guess at what his on base percentage is 
in the month of August. Try and have a puke bag nearby if you don't already. Does it start with a zero? <laughs> close. You're close. Okay. You're getting warmer. 117, James. Yeah. He is yeah. a major league baseball player. He is a major, and I don't care. You're hitting in the nine hole. 117. And why do I think that's happening? And it's kind of been discussed at length this week by, you know, multiple people, including Zach Meisel. But his walk rate has absolutely plummeted since the month of April. So I'm starting to think that the book is out on him. Just throw the dude strikes. He's literally going to do nothing to us if you throw a strike. He's going to do a weak pop up to right field or he's going to hit a weak grounder to short because the dude cannot, he can't pull the ball in the air to save his life. I mean, he's, he's in the one percentile uh, at barrel percentage and the 3% of hard hit percentage. He, I mean, he's hitting balls off the bat at like 70, 80 miles an hour. Um, and he's not giving him a, a chance cause he's not hitting the ball on the ground, but at least before he was walking. So then he can use his speed. But if he's not even walking and he's got this 117 OBP in August, he's a one-dimensional player. I mean, all he's giving you is defense, and you can give us defense from the seventh inning on. You know, and I don't even know with, you know, his speed that I've saw him, and, and I'm sure I missed it, that he's throw a bunt down. Yeah. Just, just get something just to get yourself going. I've throw said that as well. Down. Just anything to spark yourself. Maybe if you get on base and you steal a bag or two, your confidence might go up a little bit. Yeah. Um, but his 35 WRC plus since May 1st is by far the worst in baseball, too, by the way. And just to be clear, I like Miles Straw. He's another popular clubhouse guy. Um, I just think he needs to be in the right role. And to me, getting three, four at bats a night isn't the best role for him. Like last night was perfect. I actually even think they took Benson out a little too early with a four run lead. But either way, I'm not going to nitpick. That's perfect. He he took Benson out right after Benson got an at bat. He didn't bring Straw in to pinch hit for Benson. He let Benson get that at bat. Then he brought Straw in in the seventh for defense. That's yep. his role. And it's perfect. Yep. Fantastic glove. And I'll tell you what, for the rest of the year, at least till playoff time happens, um, I give him a pass just because in April, him climbing the fence and getting in Yankees fans' faces. Yeah. Uh, I like that. Yeah. I, I, I had to look. I actually looked that picture He's got that last dog night. in him for sure. Oh, yeah. You know, to stick up for Quan and uh, Machado was out there as well. Or Mercado. Mercado, um, yeah. But yeah, I give, him, I give him a slight pass, you know, as a clubhouse guy. And a defensive guy, but yeah, once again, he he needs to try a different kind of wood or something. I don't know what what's going on at the plate, but something, um, you know. And and as much as he struggled, he could turn out that at the end of the year, if, if somebody else that's been hot, he might get hot. When I say hot, what two seventy eight? I don't know, but I'll take it. Yeah, and then just kind of lastly, before we real quick go over. Uh, the start to the homestand last night, but um, Owen Miller, he's a reverse splits guy. Tito, his role seems to be starting at first base against lefties, but the problem is he doesn't hit lefties. Um, I don't know if Tito's just kind of ignoring that for whatever reason, but he's hitting 191 with a 278 OBP with 30 strikeouts against lefties this year. And for some reason, he's the starting first baseman against lefties. Maybe it's because they don't have anybody else. Um but again, he was hitting ahead of Jimenez in the lineup on Sunday. That shit's not cool. I mean, he should never, ever be ahead of Andres Jimenez. Um, but again, I'm still feeling good. I think Seattle sees a different Cleveland offense when they come to town this weekend. Hopefully, Progressive Field's rocking. They got those $11 tickets on Saturdays. Um, these guys deserve to play in front of a loud house. They just saw it in yes. Seattle. They see it. They saw it in Toronto. When they go on the road, those stadiums are rocking. They're getting the hostility. Like, let's show these boys some love at home. I'm actually uh, going to see them in Kansas City next week. My fiance and I are taking a road trip up there. Outstanding. I absolutely love going to the other ballparks. And uh, something so you got to do. Yeah. yeah. That one I have not hit yet. I have seen the Indians play uh, in Tampa, Pittsburgh, uh, Cincinnati. Well, I've seen the Guard, or not the Guardians, um, but went to Cincinnati Reds game this year. Uh, but yeah, I, I love going to different ballparks. Kansas City with the fountains, 
looks like an absolutely beautiful place to go watch a ball game. Yeah, and I mean, we got tickets right behind the Guardians bullpen for like 15 bucks. So, people, you know, I know Kansas City's obviously not in the playoff race, so their tickets are going to be a little cheaper. But I think it'll be cool to go out, watch them somewhere I'm not used to watching them. Give them some love out there. I'll be right behind uh, Stephen Kwan. So I'm a, he usually turns around. I sit in the bleachers a lot at Progressive Field. He'll turn around and kind of converse with the fans a little bit. He's definitely a cool dude. Outstanding. Um, so yeah, just to end the episode with, um, guardians got off to a good start. Crucial six game homestand. As we mentioned, they got these couple off first Baltimore and Seattle comes back to town for a nice little rematch. Um, Quantrill was fantastic. Pitched a one hitter in six innings. Um, and James, I think you got some insane stats of Cal Quantrill at progressive field. Um, absolutely. I mean, to be 11 and 0 you know, this season and then uh, 13, the, the team being 13 and 0 uh, for when Cal gets four runs of support or more. I mean, that's, that's great. So when he's on the mound, the whole, the entire team has confidence. He usually gets it too. Yep. You know, 10, 10 wins, zero losses and in, in, in any ballpark is, it's just amazing. And then you got to feel good when he's pitching at home, right? 39 starts, 12 and 0 career with a 2.81 ERA and, the broadcast stated last night he was he's the only pitcher with 10 plus wins and no losses in any ballpark. Yeah. Um but again another piece of the of the uh Clevenger trade Josh Naylor. Yep. No Mike headbutts. Clevenger. Yep. No headbutts, nobody got any concussions, but he did manage to change the entire complexion of the game with a two-run homer in the fourth and it just seemed to kind of spark the guys and wake them up a little bit. Yep. Uh you know, Clevenger's career in Cleveland had to die just so Nailers, uh, Quantrills, and Hedges could be born. Yeah. And uh, we've been fortunate. Uh, that's something we don't talk about enough as our front office. As much as uh, we want to get on the ownership for not spending money on players, but I'll tell you what, he's definitely got faith in that front office uh, with the management. Our minor league system, it shows right. I mean, it's right in front of our face this season. Oh, yeah. um, and then our player development and scouting. Um, it's We're so fortunate when some of those guys in our front office could have taken more money to actually go uh, to other teams and they, they've stayed with Cleveland and we've been very, very fortunate. And the way we uh, reward these guys is get to the ballpark. Yeah. I mean, they've been absolutely insane. Just highway robbery on some of these trades. I mean, we got class a for one inning, a Corey Kluber, which might go down as one of the best deals ever. Um, but also last night, Quan had a bases loaded two-run double. Uh, with that hit, he's now hit safely in 21 out of 25 games in the month of August. Um, and he hasn't had consecutive hitless games since the 4th of July in Detroit. I mean, we've kind of went on and on about Quan this episode, but how do you not? I mean, he should win a gold glove in left field. And I've been arguing with Mariners and Orioles fans all week that he's not top three. Rookie of the year. He's absolutely in the conversation with Julio and Adley. I think Julio will win it because he's got the wow factor and he had the home run derby. Yep. But for Quan to not even be in that discussion is just disrespectful. It is. And, you know, the national media with the voting and how that works, it's, it is disappointing. But, you know, it's wherever he finishes, it's not going to change the way he plays the game of baseball. And that's the best part of it. Yeah. And um, Will Benson. You know, we mentioned Straw seems to they kind of seem to be finally limited in his playing time a little bit here with his struggles. I mean, Will Benson had two insane catches in center field last night. I mean, Odor did the bat flip and everything, thought he hit the ball out of here. Looked like an absolute clown when Will Benson came down with that ball. I mean, I've been telling people all year, you don't lose as much as you think defensively. With Will Benson out there. Obviously, he's not quite to the level straw is just because he hasn't proven it, but he's right up there. And if you can get his confidence is going up a little bit, get this kid consistent playing time. Let's see what he's got. I'm all for it. Yeah. I'm done with straw. I am done. <laughs> I'm so done. I can tell. I can tell. <laughs> Put that straw back in the box. Yeah. It, throw that one away right now. Yeah. Um. So we got. Coming up, so again, we're still down 2 nothing in the game today. We close it out with Bieber Day tomorrow. Hopefully that's a win. Got to at least take two out of three from the Orioles. 
Uh, then we got a rematch with the Mariners this weekend. We got a national TV game Saturday night on Fox. Um, but other than that, Friday, we got a uh, – Saturday, we got Robbie Ray and Savali. And then Friday, Castillo and Plesak. So the first two games are rematches of last Saturday and Sunday. Uh, close it out on Sunday with George Kirby. Not related to me. I know all of you are wondering. He is not related to me. That happens to be my last name. Not Wayne and, Kirby either. Yeah, <laughs> nothing. I don't know. I don't know who this guy is. Maybe he's my <laughs> distant cousin or something. Uh, but he takes the bump on Sunday versus Cal Quantrill, who is pitching at home at Progressive Field. I'm gonna bet he goes 13 and 0 in his career at Progressive Field. Um, and yeah, we're just gonna see. I mean, the Twins. It's gonna be a fascinating month of September. I've had some actually really interesting conversation with twins fans over the last week. And, you know, we all kind of seem to be in agreement that five game series between the twins and the guardians, you know, really might decide a lot. I know we end the year with the Royals. They end with the white Sox, both kind of looking like favorable matchups at this point, but I just can't wait to see, you know, how these kids play in the month of September leading their division with the playoffs, you know, right there for you. Yep, hopefully we have a lot of positive things to talk about next week for sure. I'm super excited. James, I'm excited. I'm glad you're on the pod with me. Um, Let's finish out this Guardians game. Um, Let's hope we pull this out. Two nothing in the sixth. Yep, this feels like you tonight. This this feels like a game we're going to break out in like the eighth inning. I just feel it. I I have this weird voodoo. I'll predict things on Twitter before they happen sometimes, just randomly. I'll be like, I feel a home run this inning. We get a home run that inning. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to call it now. I think we're coming back late in this one. I think they're going to take get Tristan off the hook. But, um, James, it was a pleasure. Awesome first episode. And to everybody listening, uh, make sure you go to BelieveLandMediaLLC.com for all articles and written content for high school sports and all your Cleveland sports content and go ahead and give us a follow rate review. Um, Thanks all of you for listening and stay safe, stay healthy and go guardians. Mel, thank you very much. I appreciate it. It was a great time and I look forward to talking more guardians baseball next week. We'll be here. Let's hope we're talking about an excellent homestand before they head to KC. See you everyone.